Lord Jesus, we praise you today with our words, our hearts, and our minds. We pray, Lord, that you will grant us the voice of the Holy Spirit so that as we study your word, we will experience the unburdening of our ignorance of being unreceptive to your word. We ask your spirit to guide us as we seek your face. May our time together to study God's word give us the wisdom we need to live this life according to your will. We ask that you will let the Holy Spirit work in us long after this Bible study is over so that we will not forget, never forget everything we've learned today. We ask that you give us the courage and the faith we need to apply everything we will learn today in our lives. May everything we do be pleasing to you and will it give you, we pray, will give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So today we are looking at the strength to stand. And I believe we all need this strength. We all need this strength. There was a story I read about this little boy. When he was at school, there was a bully who used to ask him to give him his lunch money every day. And since the boy was much smaller than the bully, he would give it to him. And then he decided, I'm going to fight back. So he started taking karate lessons. But the karate teacher was taking $5 from him per lesson. And of course, this young boy found it was a lot, ex it was quite expensive. He found that it was cheaper to actually pay the bully, so he gave up karate. Now that's just a story, it's just a joke, but I have found that too many of us Christians, we believe it's easier to pay the bully than learn how to defeat the bully. See, I've learned it now. No. I was talking to a sister today. You know when God said to Joshua, be strong and be courageous. As a Christian, you have to be strong, you have to be courageous, you have to be ready to confront that, that, that which needs confronting. Today, I want us to take a look at what God wants to say to us about standing our ground. You have to stand your ground. No more. Do you understand? You see, God has brought us here to this point in our lives so that we can continue to know him. We can continue to love him and help others do the same. I feel that if I were, well, yes, I want to see my children get married. I want to see my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. I want to grow old. But you know something? Before anything else, oh, all the lessons I've learned in life, I want to teach other people. I want to teach other people. You see, why must you stand? To go back now through retreat or defeat is to undo some of the work that God is doing in you. And perhaps through your life, doing in the lives of people around you. I use myself for example. There are many things that you have learned from me. For those who are able to live in close proximity with me, they see these things. For those who I can teach, you learn these things. Do I have bad days? Ah, ah. We're all humans now. But I will say this to you. I will not retreat. I will not go back. And I believe that that is why God gives us the strength to stand firm because he wants us to be victorious. God wants us to win every single struggle that we face. And he wants us to pull together and to help one another stand our ground. Exactly, no surrender. But I'm not doing it for myself alone. I want to do it for you, with you. God says you must not yield a single inch to the enemy. In short, what is the message today? God wants you to stand your ground and God is willing to give you everything you need to do so. So we're going to look at a few reminders this evening that will help us to find the strength to stand as we face the enemy of our souls. 
And every day we face the enemy. Every day. Every day we face the enemy. So number one, what is God telling us? Our text is going to be taken. Remember I said we are looking at the book of Ephesians. The letter to the Ephesians. So we're looking at Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. And let me read. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Amen. Amen. So, number one, God wants you always remember where your strength comes from. Always remember where does my strength come from. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. It's not your strength and it's not my strength. Do you understand? After all that Paul had just written, he brings verse 10 as a reminder. Let me say this. You cannot do it by yourself. You cannot. You cannot be the best worker. You cannot be the best boss. Do you understand? There's always going to be someone that is better than you. There's always going to be somebody that you are better than. Do you understand? You cannot obey your parents in all things. Your child, one minute, they are good. The next minute, they disappoint you. So even as a parent, can you be the best parent? For people that are parents here, if you ask your child, one day you may be the best parent, then the next day you are not. Parents provide patient training, loving training to our children. Do you do that all the time? How many husbands can love their wives as Jesus Christ loved the church and gave himself for her? How many? What about wives? How many wives submit to their own husbands? I know myself. I'm a wife. Today I've already charged for my husband. I was still telling somebody, today you see we cannot live a holy life of love that is pleasing to God unless you have his help unless you have God's help and you admit that God has helped us because if God it was not God that helped us we would not have grown as much as we have grown for me to be able to come out and say I am not the best wife that I should be. Or I'm not the best wife that I could have been or I can be. But I know that I can admit it and I know that with God's help, I am making all effort to be a better wife. I'm making all effort to be a better mother. I'm making all effort to be a better friend, a better sister, a better servant leader. not for God, will I be here today? I won't be standing on the ground that I'm standing on if the Lord had not been on my side. So we must never forget that what has gotten us this far is the only thing that's going to keep us moving closer and closer and closer to God is Jesus. And so you ask me, SL, how can I be strong in the Lord? What does that mean in my life? Well, we can certainly find different ways to tap into the power of God throughout the Bible. Paul has already mentioned to us, he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit rather than wine and alcohol. A really good way to do that is found by waiting and hoping. We are back again to this hope. Hoping in the Lord. Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. 
Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and they will not faint. Joshua was encouraged by God to be strong and be of good courage. This is what he was told after Moses died. And he was appointed to lead the people of Israel to the promised land. I'm sure Joshua would have been like, ha! These people that messed my yoga up. So what did Joshua do? He did this by trusting in God and believing that God was with him just as God had been with Moses. What about David? David recognized from the very beginning that his help came from the Lord who made the heavens and the, the earth. What about Paul? Paul shows us that the full armor of God is what you need that will make you strong in the Lord. And in the next verses that we're going to look at, he will spell this out. So if I want to just mix everything together, boil everything down, you could say simply, Staying connected to God is what will make you strong when you remain connected to him. For those of you who participate in the 5 p.m. declarations and perhaps also do the quarter to midnight prayers and you find that you are praying every day, has your life not changed? Your life has changed. Even you know you have a confidence around you and you see people are watching you and people are wondering what used to give you stress before. It's not that they've changed. The situation hasn't changed. You are the one that has changed. And the situation will change. This next verse reminds us why we need to be ready to fight in God's power. 11, verse 11 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. <laughs> And you ask yourself, why should I bother? Why should I fight? Is it not just easier to just give up? Is it not easier to just stop caring? But let me say this to you. <laughs> if you give up, if you stop fighting, that act of stopping the fight comes with a price. Get ready to be turned to bean smith. Do you hear me? Get ready. If you give up, because the devil is an unrelenting, unrepentant foe. What you are doing is you are willing to pay the bully. And if you pay the bully, it means you are ready to give up something. It may cost you your family. It may cost you your, your spiritual vitality. It may cost you your testimony. There are people that are watching you. It may cost you your life. Do not pay the bully. Don't ever give up. If you don't fight, you will lose ground. So you must take your stand. You cannot afford to give up. You cannot afford to give up. I like to watch... Um, old films. Films set in... Early England. Before there was England, so to speak. I like to watch films about the Vikings especially. And the Vikings were a formidable force. But when the Romans came, <laughs> you see, they about Roman soldiers. Roman soldiers, they were taught to fight together. They learned that if fear or intimidation broke up their ranks, they lost their ability to fend off an enemy. You see, the ground you are standing on, it represents growth and strength. It represents God's work in your life. See, who will say that you have, you've grown, Abby? Spiritually, you have grown. Did you grow by yourself? You didn't grow by yourself. You did not grow by yourself. You grew in the midst of other believers. You grew in the midst of a certain type of fellowship that you are a part of. So you don't want to give that up. You don't want to give that up. That is why you need God's full armor. You don't want to lose ground because if you lose ground, you're going to become a casualty. And the enemy is scheming. He says, be careful. 
of the devil's schemes. I want you to know this. I will say to you that God loves you and has a plan for your life. Many of you, people have spoken into your lives that God loves you and God has a plan for your life. Is there anybody here that has been told how much God loves them and how God has a plan for their life? Is there anybody here? I know that about my life. I know that God loves me. God has a plan for my life. I know it as a fact. But you know something? I want you to know this. As much as God loves you and has a plan for your life, eh? the devil does not love you. And the devil also has a plan for your life. Do you get it? The devil wants to devour you. He wants to eat you up. As Peter wrote, he wants to eat you up. He wants to devour you. John said he wants to steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy. But Paul tells us, 2 Corinthians 2.11, we are not unaware of his schemes or ignorant of his devices. So we know. So what are you fighting for? You are fighting for your spiritual growth first and foremost. You are fighting for your progress. You are fighting for that opportunity to make a lasting difference as you stand your ground. You have to stand your ground before anything else. You need to remember who you are fighting. Verse 12 tells us, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You see, you don't need to make too much of the list. Though. Don't, don't bother to try and, and, and picture what these things are. Do you understand? I just believe that Paul used them to describe the enemy. Just sum everything, put all of them together in a pot. It's the devil. And all his evil forces who are at work in this world. Do you understand? Satan is not our only enemy. But he appears to be the leader of the enemy forces in the spirit realm. There are many. There are many. Do you understand? It's not only Satan. You see, if we... Let's think a bit this evening. So that we will... And in our thoughts, we will be able to know who we are up against. So the names of Satan, they actually reveal his tactics. Satan, adversary, devil, sad slanderer, Lucifer, son of the morning, Beelzebub, prince of demons, Belial, without prophet, evil one, tempter, prince of this world, accuser of the brethren. Representations of this include serpent, dragon, angel of light, now, we know that Satan attacks God's program. What is God's program? Anything for the kingdom to come, God's kingdom to come here on earth. Satan attacks God's church. How does he do this? False religions. You can check that out in 1 Corinthians 10, 19. And of course, I'm not going to read those scriptures. So that in your study time, when you go over this ministration, your study time, you read and get more understanding. How does Satan attack the church and God's program? Through false ministers. I said it. People, they like pro prophecy, 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 prophecy. Itchy ears. We want to hear what we want to hear. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen to 15. Through false doctrine. There are so many churches now. So many places they call themselves churches. 1 John 2. 18. False disciples. Matthew 13. False morals. 2 Thessalonians 2 7. So many things going on in what is called the body of Christ. How does Satan attack God's people? He does this by directing governments. You will see some countries, their leader will pick one thing that he knows that Christians like to hear. 
But every other thing is opposite. Daniel 10, 13. Deceiving men. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Destroying life. Hebrews 2, 14. Persecuting the saints. Revelation 2, 10. Preventing service. 1 Thessalonians 2, 18. Promoting schisms, breakups in church. 2 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11. Planting doubt. Genesis 3, 1 to 2. Did God really say, are you sure? Provoking sin and anger. Ephesians 26. Ephesians 2. Sorry, I have to check that out. Pride. 1 Timothy 3, 6. Worry. Matthew 13, 22. Self-reliance. 1 Chronicles 21, 1. Discouragement. 1 Peter 5, 6 to 8. Worldliness, 1 John 2, 16. Lying, Acts 5, 3. Immorality, 1 Corinthians 5, 1 to 2. Producing sects and cults and groups within the church, 1 Timothy 4, 1. So you see, it's not that he doesn't have power. The devil has power. He has power. But guess what? Satan's power is limited. Always remember that. Because Satan is a creation. He was also created. So he's not omniscient and he's not infinite. James 4, 7 tells us, resist the devil. So the devil can be resisted by the Christian. God has placed limitations on him. Go and read that in Job 1, 12. God can ask the devil, where are you coming from? Where are you going? You can do this, but you cannot do that. So, what do we need to know about the enemy? Know some of the tactics of your enemy so that you can identify your opposition. And it's also important for you to remember who the enemy is not. You need to remember every single day, remember who you are not fighting. Verse 12 tells us, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That human being is not your enemy. They may be an agent that the devil is using. They themselves are in trouble. There are times when we think that another person is our enemy. Yes, I'm not saying that Satan cannot use people as pawns to do his dirty work. But let me tell you this, you are not going to gain any ground by directing your attack at another person. You are not. You are not. You are not. A couple of days ago, someone was sharing with me and just talking and said, oh, someone had come to them to ask them to pray for somebody's child, that the child has, is having serious challenges, etc., etc. And I was amazed. I was really amazed. You know why I was amazed? Because this particular child Someone that is close to me, that child's mother was looking for their trouble. And that mother, that lady, all she used to do was, God, all my troublers, all my troublers, Lord, Father, wherever the enemy is coming from, Father, give them something to occupy their mind. Give them something. Give my enemy and I would tell this lady, I said, don't pray for any human being. She said she's not praying for any human being. But wherever the problem is coming from, I found it, I was so amazed. So stop directing your attack at another human being. Your enemy is the devil. Any agent or anyone that decides to use themselves as a pawn, unfortunately, collateral damage. But the prayer for all of us is nobody should go to hell. Nobody should go to hell. So as we glance back over at what Paul has written, it may help us to realize that our struggle is not against your boss. It's not against a parent. It's not against your children. It's not against your spouse. But your spouse. It's not against worldly people. 
It's not against members of God's family. It's not. It's not. Sadly, Christians sometimes actually fall into the trap of fighting with other Christians. I don't know if it's to prove superiority. Because you choose to mismanage an offense that stands between you and another believer. We all have to learn humility has to be the order of the day. We should be very careful over offenses. Take whatever offense you have directly to the source and seek to work things out. As believers, let us learn not to allow the sun to go down on an offense. Whether you are the offender or the offendee, try at by all means to make peace. It is up to you to take action that will restore peace and grace to the relationship. And of course, as we have been praying for family, it takes work and effort to keep unity in your spiritual family and in any family. So you have to be smart. You have to be aware. Remember, it is a spiritual war. Don't launch an attack on a fellow flesh and blood human. Do you hear me? You are not going to touch anything. You might end up hurting somebody. So, the next time you are tempted to lash out at another person, remember who your real enemy is. Remember what it takes to stand your ground. Verse 13 tells us, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. We're going to spend in this series a little time on the full armor of God, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, God's word and prayer. Because we need everything. We need everything. It's not just the armor of God. It's not just the armor of God. The full armor means we need to use everything. Do you understand? So when you hear the full, wear the full armor of God, all that helmet, breastplate, belt, that's just armor. The full armor is everything. So it's telling us that we need everything that God has given us to help us win the struggle that we face. I don't think there's anyone here that does not face or is not facing one challenge or another. Romans 8, 31 to 32. And it's so important for us to read the word because I don't know about you, but this is what gives me confidence. It says, if God is for us, who can be against us? I actually like who or what can be against us. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? I'm not afraid of anything or anybody. I'm not. I'm not. If you are close to me, I will tell you from the beginning, I'm not afraid of this situation. And I know it can only end well for me. And I know it will only end well for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So we have all that we need from God. You better wear it. You better put what God has given you on. Why? Because it is a fight to the finish. Do you hear me? It is a fight to the finish. There is no retreating. There is no retreating. Somebody must, somebody must die. And that person is not you. And that person is not me. The message version says it this way, 10 to 12. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so that you'll be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. There is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Verses 13 to 18. Be prepared. You are up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it is all over, but the shouting, you will still be on your feet. 
So that's the message version. I ask you this question this evening. Are you standing your ground? Are you doing it with God's strength or your own? You see, I will share this with you. That victory begins and ends with God and his power over the enemy. By ourselves, we cannot do it. We will fall flat on our faces in our own strength. But with God for us and his armor on us, all things are possible. We can win our struggles against this invisible enemy. If you need God to help you and strengthen you today, you know, send me a direct message on Instagram. Perhaps we need to pray together that you will know God's power in the coming days. I don't know if you are here and you are feeling the weight of the struggle. And you just need God to just breathe new life into you. One thing I know, let me tell you one thing I know. One thing I know for a fact. You need to get recharged. You need to plug in. You see, some people, eh, they don't need to pray. I don't know what, how they do it. But someone like me, if, you see, I'm one of those people who my charger is permanently connected to the device. Permanently on, on the wall. In fact, I have, you know that lightning, high-speed lightning charger? Everything is high-speed lightning. You must learn to plug into praise. Learn to plug into prayer. Plug into time with God. Plug into God's word. Plug into fellowship, spending time with others who belong to God's family. Others that can encourage you. Others that can pray for you. Have there not been times when, if you are participating in five-year meditation, you may just be in your house and you just think, somebody whose name appears on the feed, 5 a.m. declaration, just appears to you. God wants you to pray for them at that point. Don't try to do it alone. Plug into God's purpose for your life. If you're not doing what God has called you to do, you will lose your sense of direction. And it really doesn't matter where you stand. You see, one place is as good as another if you're not following God's purpose for your life. So as I pray, Ask God to show you his way. Where do you want me to be, Daddy? Lead me in the way that I should go. Let us pray. And Lord, Father, we just thank you. We thank you that this is a time of awakening. Could be because we are the cusp of a new month. This is a time of being refreshed by your word. A time to learn to stand our ground. Help us, Lord, to understand that your word is spirit, that your word is life, and that your word never fails. Never fails. According to John 17, 17, thy word is truth. You said that you have made null your word. We have made null your word by traditions, and we have used our own wisdom to destroy the authority of your word. But Lord, we thank you that we are new creatures in Christ Jesus and as new creatures in Christ we are a part of your kingdom and we need to have our minds renewed to the truth renewed to your truth so this evening Lord we ask you to help us to renew our minds to kingdom thinking for it is only by your truth that we can be truly set free we know according to your word Lord that you are living in us we know and thank the Holy Spirit for dwelling in our lives Father, thank you. You have given us the power of attorney. We can use your name. We can authorize. Your, because your name authorizes us to cast out demons. Your name authorizes us to bind and loose, to lay hands on the sick and to see them fully cured. You are the one that said, whoever believes in you will also do the works that you do, even greater works than you. And so, Lord, we thank you for your promises in our lives. Our prayer, Lord, is that you give us a fresh desire to spend time in the Bible so that we can call your truths to mind 
in our moments of need. Father, remind us of the truth of your word, the instant that we need it. Father, help us to hold solidly onto your truth and show integrity in every decision and act with courage as we face the enemy. Because the enemy is unrelenting, Lord. I want you to pray this evening and tell God, say, Lord, do not allow me to cave to the ways and the habits of this world. I am in this world, but I am not of this world. Ask God to help you to act in complete righteousness in everything that you need to do. Tell God you want to bring so much honor and glory to his name in all your actions and your decisions in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just thank God this evening. Thank God that faith in the name of Jesus and faith in the power of his word is all we need to do these greater things that Jesus Christ has told us about. Father, we just thank you for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so, Lord, thank you. We come before you today in humility and gratitude. Thank you for the gift of your word, the opportunity to study your word today. We recognize that it's only through your grace and your power that we can gain spiritual enlightenment. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to seek your will for our lives. Empower us to become spiritually enlightened. Bring us closer to you, Lord. May our understanding of your word bring us peace and joy. May it strengthen our faith. We ask all this in your name. Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing this evening with us at Rebirth. Look forward to as many of you who are going to participate in our Bible study at quarter at 10 p.m. tonight on Zoom. And of course, a quarter to midnight prayers at 11.45. God bless you. Remain lifted in God's presence always.